The seat is the success model of the brand Kia. Until now you could have ordered it as a seat, a sports wagon or the new Pro Seat. But now the family got a new member with the new compact crossover called X Seat. And this is the car I'm driving today. The X Seat is part of the Kia Seat family, but this is a completely new car. And so the only body parts that this car has in common with the standard seat are the front doors. When you look at the front of the car, you instantly see that car is a bit wider than the standard seat. And it's exactly 26 mil because it's one meter 83. And then have a look at the front grille. This is completely new, more flat, more wide. And very important, that car always comes as standard with full LED headlamps and LED daytime running lights. When you then look at the front bumper we have a very wide car here with a big air intake down here and so I think that car looks from the front extremely solid even though it is quite small. With 4 meters 40 in length the X seat is about 85 mil longer than the standard seat and that even though both cars featuring the same wheelbase with 2 meters 65 but let's have a look at the design when you look at the front you do find typical for uh, kia a very long hood and what i really like with the car are these headlamps which are running right into the side of the car and then look at these wheels 18 inch but the exit comes as standard on 16 inch alloys and to make the car look a bit more yeah let's say off-roady we do find these Cladding here, the wheel arches and the cladding here, the side of the car, and that together really gives the car a bit more robust look. And to say, yeah, this looks like an off-roader, that car features more than 18 centimeters of ground clearance. But to make the car more beautiful, you do find a roof line which drops to the rear, and this is underlined by the side window graphics. And that really gives the car the extra push to the front, makes it more dynamic, and makes it really looking very unique. Looking at the rear of the X seat, you instantly see we have a very flat rear window and that, yeah, this stops you under the spoiler at the rooftop. Um, here at the bottom, we do have a very sharp line here that which gives the car width. And then when you look more down, you do of course find the Kia logo and the signature X seat. And then to look, make the car look a bit more robust, we do find, um, yeah, let's say a bit of a fake under right protection here at the rear. But to make the car even more, look more sporty, we do find these exhaust pipes here, which are fake pipes because the real exhaust is beneath the car. And I think something very interesting are, as with the front, these taillights here, because they are as standard in LED and they do run into the side of the car. And that really underlines the shoulders of the exit. And so the car looks from the rear, I think very robust, very solid. And by the way, this is the view which I like the most regarding to the exit. The interior of the exit is quite modern because that car for the very first time features a full digital 12.3 inch cockpit if you want. It's an optional feature but very nice and you can configure it the way you want. But for me more important is the car comes as standard with a 5 inch screen here at the center console or if you have the next trim level with an 8 inch. But the top version is more than 10 inch and this inside of such a small car really is something extremely special. It looks a bit like a tally at the center console and that really lifts the interior of the car to the next level. Talking about the um, materials and the craftsmanship inside of the car, I can tell you everything looks very nice and you do find soft touch materials all around here at the top level of the interior. You only find plastic down here at the center console or inside of the doors. And I think this is very nice for the class and I really do like the look of the car here because we do drive the launch edition, which means we do have this yellow stitching here, the door panels on the seats and we do have these yellow frames um, here at the uh, outtakes and that is really something nice and makes this interior look so fresh and so modern. Regarding to the storage space inside of this X-Seat, I have to say we do find, as expected, quite nice um, compartments here. The door panels, um, we do have on top two cup holders in the center console and a smaller compartment here at the front, uh, in front of the gear stick. And then on top you have beneath the armrest an extra, I think quite nice compartment. And very important is with the front one here, you do find there 12 volt sockets, two of them, as well as a USB socket, which you then can use for the optional Apple CarPlay or Android Auto devices. 
When the Kia X-Seed hits the market, there will be three petrol and two diesel engines available for the car. And they offer a power range between 85 up to 150 kilowatt, which means we do talk about 115 up to 204 horsepower. The car is always a front wheel power car, so even it looks like a off-roady car, you cannot order all-wheel drive. Uh, gear changing is always a standard with a six-speed manual gearbox, but for the three most powerful engines, you can order a double-clutch transmission, which then offers seven gears. <laughs> The car features the 1.4 litre 140 horsepower petrol engine and that offers you a maximum torque of 242 newton meters and that is combined in our car with a 7 speed automatic gearbox and this is a very nice package because that's powerful enough to accelerate the car in 9.5 seconds to 100 and that offers you a top speed of about 200 kilometers per hour. Um, the drive is very nice and smooth and the gearbox really makes the perfect job. The only thing is if you really want to accelerate quick and you push the pedal to the metal, you do, do really see loads of revs which give you some noise. But during standard driving, the noise level is very nice and the drive is really easy. Uh, regarding to the uh, consumption, Kia says the car should take a bit less than 6 litres per 100 kilometer driven in average. During our test drive we used between 7.5 up to 8 litres per 100 kilometer. but I think if you drive as a standard person, a standard traffic, you should expect something around 7. The suspension of the X seat offers you, even though the car features 18 centimetres of ground clearance, the opportunity to drive the car, yeah, quite dynamic, but it's still very comfortable. That is a very nice mix. And on top of this, you do have a steering, which really is precise enough without being nervous. And so you can drive the car, yeah, a very nice way. On top of this, we do have the uh, a sports mode option on board because we do drive the automatic gearbox. And with that one, the, uh, if you use that one, the steering gets a bit more heavy and the uh, engine gets a bit more agile. And that gives you a feeling of, yeah, a bit more, like, let's say, sportiness inside of your X seat. The X seat comes as standard, quite nice equipped, so the car features uh, a cruise control as well as a climate control as standard. But if you want, you can have a lot more of luxury on board. So you can have heated seats front and rear, you can have a two-zone climber system on board, and you can have loads of other extras like um, a rear view camera and so on and so on. And at the end of the day, if you do it the right way and choose the right options, you will find a very luxury compact car. The Kia x seat starts with a 120 horsepower three-cylinder petrol engine at 21,390 euros in Germany. For comparison, the Volkswagen T-Roc is available from 21,170 euros and offers a three-cylinder with 115 horsepower. A Mazda CX-30 with a 122 horsepower four-cylinder is available from 24,290 euros. Different to the Volkswagen or Mazda, the Kia is not available with all-wheel drive. But the Kia x seat comes well equipped. So for example, LED headlights, 16-inch alloy wheels and a cruise control are always on board. The x seat comes as standard with the most important safety and security features. So it offers a front collision warning as well as a lane keeping assist. And I think the more important or interesting thing is you can order optionally loads of extra assistance and safety systems like rear cross traffic alert, traffic sign recognition, adaptive cruise control and all this stuff. And that really is something you will not find with every car in this class. Let's have a look into the boot of the X-Seat. With the rear seats up, the X seat offers 426 liters of maximum boot capacity. That's, by the way, about 30 liters more than with a standard seat. When you fold down the rear bench, that increases up to 1,378 liters. And important with that car is it always comes with a variable floor here, which means you can open it here and you have loads of extra capacity down here. And if you want, you can lower the floor by about 10 centimeters. The Volkswagen T-Roc offers 445 to 1290 liters of maximum loading capacity. With 430 to 1406 liters, the luggage compartment of the Mazda CX-30 features slightly more space than the Kia. The space the car offers here at the front seat is very, very nice. 
there is not so much headroom left for a tall person like me but I do have this big sunroof mounted so maybe you can have a bit more there if you just say I don't want it but the rest is very nice so I do uh, have the opportunity to adjust the steering wheel the way I want and so I really do find a very nice seating position and that's re really comfortable uh, but I think on the rear seats there's not so much space but we will have a sh closer look at that while doing a short stop then. So have a look how much space we do find at the rear seats. Um, no, that won't work for me so I take my seat a bit more forward uh, that should be sufficient so let's see if i can enter the car <laughs> it's for a big man like me not so easy to get in but now i do sit i do miss a bit of headroom but i'm really tall so for me that's not perfect but i think if you're a standard person front a bit more yeah it's shorter person at the rear that could work <laughs> That was my test drive with the new Kia X seat and what I really like with the car beside the nice and special exterior is the interior especially with our launch edition with these yellow extra elements that really looks very nice and friendly and then something very interesting we do find for the first time a full digital cockpit optionally and we do find an infotainment with a more than 10 inch touchscreen that really is something special for that size of a car what I don't like so much with the interior is the space at the rear seats especially for a tall person like me but I think if you're a standard driver and standard co-driver that may work it should work for short distances but regarding to the head space we do have a light, slightly coupe shape so you have to expect a bit less head space uh, talking about the engine we drove the 1.4 liter petrol combined with a 7 speed DSG and that really is a great combination this powerful enough really drives very nicely gear changing is absolutely smooth and easy uh, the only downside is when you really want to accelerate heavily that car gives you massive revs but as, as I said for standard driving really very nice regarding to the price the entrance price here in Germany will be 21,390 euros for the base version if you want the bit higher trim level which is called vision you have to expect two and a half thousand euros more but that is something you have to think about because you get loads of extras if you want to drive the top version or the launch edition you have to expect prices above 30 thousand euros but overall I have to say I really do like the car a lot and I think this is an absolutely nice new member for the seat family